All right. Hi, everybody. So in this video, I want to work through an example where we would use Google Colab. So I will actually screen record um, what I'm doing in Google Colab in a second. But here we are in the slides. Um, so the transformation that I want to consider now will we'll go a little bit bigger, which is why Google Colab is going to be nice in using Python. So now we're going to map from four dimensional space R4 into R4. So that means we're going to have a four by four matrix where this transformation T is defined by matrix multiplication. We're going to take a vector X, multiply it by matrix A, where matrix A is this four by four matrix. Um, the first column being four minus nine minus six, five. The second column minus two, seven, four minus three. Column three is five minus eight, five, eight. And column four is minus five, zero, three, and minus four. So we want to answer two questions. Um, question one is, let's find all of the vectors in R4 that are mapped to the zero vector in R4. So from the previous theorem, certainly the zero vector is going to map to the zero vector. But are there other non-trivial solutions to this equation? So we'll take a look at this question. Um, question two is asking us um, to find all x in the domain. Um, maybe there aren't any. Maybe there'll be one. Maybe there'll be more than one. Um, but let's find all x such that um, when we apply transformation t to x, we wind up with the vector um, 7, 5, 9, 7. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Google Colab, or just a blank Google Colab. Um, where I'll enter some commands to answer both of these questions. Okay, so I am in my Google Drive and I have opened up a brand new Google Colab document and I started entering some of the information about this problem in here. Uh, and in the um, comments or in the description of this video, I will put a link to this file, you'll be able to view it and you can save it in your own drive and edit it if you like. Um, but we'll talk about different ways that we could solve this. So um, I'm going to import the NumPy library as NP because um, I'm going to be working with arrays. So anytime I want to call in a function such as the array function from the NumPy library, I'm going to put a prefix of NP just to denote that this function array lives in the NumPy library. That's where the MP comes from. So um, the question that we were looking at, the matrix of coefficients, I'm going to call matrix A, and I've entered that here. So recall the first, you can double check my entering here. The first column was 4 minus 9 minus 6, 5. The second column of matrix A was minus 2, 7, 4, and minus 3. The third column of matrix A was 5 minus 8, 5, and 0. And then the fourth column was minus five, zero, three, and minus four. Um, in part one of the question, we wanted to identify under this map, which is defined by this matrix A, um, what vectors X are mapping to the zero vector. So I've entered the zero vector. I'm calling that Z down below. There are other ways, nicer ways that you could do this, but just to stick to our same convention, I'm going to use NumPy array. And here, each row just has one entry, the zero, and we've got four rows. So this is Z is the zero matrix, or excuse me, the zero vector. Um, and then question two was saying, is there some vector X in R4 that when I apply this transformation, multiply by matrix A, that I get this vector B which is seven, five, nine, seven. Um, so is there some vector X which gets mapped to this vector B seven, five, nine, seven? So there are um, two ways that we can solve this or um, probably many ways that we can solve this, but um, on the Python labs we've been working with, we've been using um, reduced row echelon form function, which is built into the SymPy library and there's also a linalg solve function built into the numpy library that we can actually use here because our coefficient matrix 
is square. We have four, the same number of rows as we have columns. So um, question one, so yeah, so down here I've got, um, these are commented out, keep in mind when I've got these pound symbols. So here was how we can reference or call in the matrix reduced row echelon form function built into the SymPy library. And here's how we can call in and use the linalg solve function, which is a part of the NumPy library. So question one was asking us to figure out what vectors X get mapped to the zero vector. So clearly the trivial solution is one such solution, but there might be others. This might not be a one-to-one -one map and we could have multiple vectors X which get mapped to the zero vector. So one way I can solve this is using uh, this linalg solve function from NumPy. Keep in mind that this is going to work as long as our matrix A is square, which it is in this case. So this function takes two inputs. First, I enter the coefficient matrix. Then I enter the right side of the equation. And so question one was asking us about the homogeneous equation. So I have the zero vector on the right side. And um, I can run this, but keep in mind, um, I wanna print the output nicely below. So I have two print commands on the bottom. So one, I'm gonna print the solution to question one. So let me call this result x1. Okay, so x1, um, so this is gonna solve this equation, which in this case, it's really solving um, ax is equal to zero. And we're gonna call this solution X1. And question two, we wanna solve this. So this, um, when, for what vectors X get mapped to that um, vector B that we defined up here. And again, um, this problem came from the slides at the start of this video. So this is saying, okay, for what vectors, I'll call these X2, when we map by this transformation T. So when I take A and multiply it by a vector X, do I wind up with B? And this one we'll call X2. So here we could use the same NP lin alg solve. And now instead of setting the right side equal to zero, we set the right side equal to B. Um, so in using these functions, they're in NumPy. And in fact, um, I wouldn't even necessarily need to import SymPy to solve this because all of the functions array and linalg solve are in the NumPy library. And then I can print these out and let's see what we get. Uh, that was really fast. So here's the output that we got. So the solution to question one is X is equal to zero, 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 zero. So what I can see is that this equation over here has only the trivial solution. Okay, so again, if we have a linear map, the zero vector has to map to the zero vector. And what we can see is that's the only vector that maps to the zero vector. And then in question two, we can see that, um, yes, that um, this vector is, um, in the range of that transformation because we can see that that equation does have a solution, which is given here, okay? Looks pretty messy. Um, I would recommend using Python and Google Colab to do this as opposed to applying a series of row um, operations on your own. Um, if you're curious about how we could use SymPy to answer this, let me add a second code block down below um, we have already imported SymPy, so I don't need to do it again, um, but it's probably good form to um, take SymPy and put it down here, um, since this is the block where we're going to use it. And keep in mind, since I ran this block of um, this cell of code, that all of these objects that we've defined, A, B, and Z, and M, 
they're all going to get passed through to the next block of code. So I don't need to re-enter those matrices. And if I want to use the SymPy operation here, I'm going to apply this to matrix M. So matrix M was the augmented matrix for the non-homogeneous system. Okay, so here we're answering question two. So I'll paste this down below to solve um, for what vector is X when we multiply A by X, do we wind up with this matrix B? So rather than use the NP Linalg solve, let's use the SymPy function matrix ref. And keep in mind that the input that we put over here goes in. First, we enter the matrix part. And over here, we could put some options um, if we wanted to see the pivot columns or not. And I'll just answer, uh, I'll just run this one over here and only this and we'll get the output right to our screen. And so if we compare the output from using the matrix reduced row echelon function in SymPy, seems like we have a different solution to question two than when we use the Lin algebra solve. So this output from using Lin algebra solve seemed to imply that we had a unique solution to the equation AX is equal to B. When we did SymPy, it puts it into reduced row echelon form. And we can see that we have pivot columns in column index zero, so like the first column, column index one, which is the second column of our matrix, column index two, which is the third column of our matrix. And we actually have a free variable. X4 is a free variable. So we should have an infinite number of solutions. So actually, this SymPy calculation gives us a more um, robust solution. This captures all of them, whereas LinAlge Solve just gave us one of them. So it's possible we might have made a mistake in question one as well, because LinAlge Solve is just giving us one solution here that we know the trivial solution has to be one, but maybe there are others. And so you might be looking at this solution from LinAlge Solve. And this solution from matrix reduced row echelon form and thinking, how are these the same? And so what's happening in this solution is they've made a choice for X4. This is a free variable. So they've picked X4 as the value minus 0 0.8625. So let me check these calculations down here. So I'm going to say, OK, X4, that's equal to minus 0 0.8625. 8625. And now we can write relations for x1, x2, x3 in terms of x4. So we can see from the top row in the reduced row echelon form that x1, oh, I've already defined x1. You can see that over here. So I'm going to call it y1, sorry, just for sake of um, preserving things. So I'm going to call these y's instead of x's. So my free variable I set as minus 0. 8625. Um, the first variable here, x1 that I'm now calling y1, well, this would really be 4. And then I would need to go ahead and add that 3 plus 5 times y4. So that's what I'm getting from this top row, right? This is telling me the 1 is x sub 1, but I'm calling y1 is equal to the four. And then I would need to pull the minus 3.5 times x4 to the other side. And so that's why I have an addition over here. And if this code is easier to read, I can um, spread out the operations. We can similarly do the same. I can figure out what would y2 be. Well, y2 would be this seven that we have over here. And then I'm going to pull that 4.5 times y4 to the other side. And then y3 is going to equal 1. And then um, we don't have any dependence on the free variable for this one over here. So just for the sake of being 
complete, I would have zero times y4. And now let's go ahead and print this output to the screen. So I will put y1, and then I'm going to put a line break, and then y2, and then another line break, and then y3, and then another line break. So remember that line breaks um, in Python, we put with a backslash n, and then y4. And this gives us a similar solution um, as the one that we had up here. Notice here, we get a little bit more accuracy. So we're not getting different solutions, um, just the lin alge solve, you gotta be really careful, only finds one solution and it doesn't necessarily give us all of the solutions. So let's make sure that question one was solved correctly. So question one, we wanted to solve um, for what X is, is A X equal to zero. And I actually don't have an um, augmented matrix for this entered above. I only entered the augmented matrix for the um, non-homogeneous equation, but that's okay. So let's see, well, let's use um, SymPy and the fact that the right side is equal to zero, um, we can still answer this by putting the coefficient matrix into reduced row echelon form. And remember that if we have a pivot in every single column of matrix A, then the homogeneous solution has a unique solution. So let me type that out. So if A has a pivot in every column, then the homogeneous equation AX equals B has a unique, has only the trivial solution. Okay. Whereas if we, we have a free variable on the other side, conversely, then we're going to have um, more, we're going to get non-trivial solutions. So let's see what happens here um, when I run this. Let me run this in a um, different code block. I'll put that down here. So we've entered matrix A in our earlier code block. We've imported SymPy already. So this should be up and ready to run. And let's see what happens here. And we can see once again, if we had stopped at using lin alge solve, we can see here that we don't have a pivot in every single column. So therefore, um, this is not a unique solution and there must be some non-trivial solutions that exist. So in particular, we can see from this that, you know, Column one of the matrix has a pivot, column two has a pivot, column three has a pivot. Again, um, for the homogeneous, I've used um, Y, so I'm gonna use Z here. We have one free variable. So this is free. So Z4 could be anything. Let's set it equal to, to one. Um, once I know what Z4 is, or in this, that's really holding the place for X4, then I know that the first variable is going to have a solution of 3.5 times z4. Uh, the second variable would be 4.5 times z4. And the third would be z3 is equal to um, zero, right? That comes from this over here, times z4. So that's what our solutions would actually look like. So let me kind of show you how we could LaTeX that solution. So here are the solutions to the homogeneous equation. I'll put this in LaTeX, A times math bold font X is equal to math bold font zero. And I should see that displayed nicely over here. Um, if where the um, formatted text appears. What I can see here is that anything of the form, um, let's enter this in B matrices. So we're gonna say begin B matrix 
and we've got um, x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, x sub four, And again, we've got one free variable, which is x sub four. So I can write this as x sub four times uh, the matrix of 3.5, 4.5, 0. And then x sub four, we put a one in its place. Down below, we can see that from this form of the reduced row echelon form for just the coefficient matrix, we can see we have an infinite number of solutions. Any vector of this form would work. When we used Linalge solve in the first um, setup, it chose x4 equals to zero, and we just got the zero vector. So be really careful. I think the moral of the story here is that it's safer to use um, the SymPy reduced row echelon form to solve these equations because when we use Linalge solve, if the solutions are not unique, we don't see that. It seems to imply that the solutions were unique over here. Uh, okay, so I will put a link in the description of this video um, to this Google Colab file so that you can play around with it on your own if you like.